Hi, this is Wagner Kamakura. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use my analytical tools for Excel to cluster observations into homogeneous groups. But before that, I want to give you the intuition behind cluster analysis. Suppose that we have some data where we have cases or rows described by two or more variables in the columns. The purpose of cluster analysis is to form groups of similar cases where each case is more similar to members of its own cluster than to cases from other clusters. Essentially, we want to have high variance on those two or more variables between groups than within groups. And the most popular algorithm to do cluster analysis is called k-means clustering. This is a very efficient uh, algorithm that can handle large number of cases and large number of variables. It's extremely simple, fast, and is guaranteed to converge. And I wanted to show you the intuition behind this particular algorithm, the k-means clustering algorithm. So here's how it works, and it's incredibly simple. First of all, you have to specify how many clusters do you want. In other words, you have to predefine k, the number of clusters, or the number of means. Uh, usually, you don't know that a priori. If that's the case, you just run the algorithm with different values of k. Run it with two clusters, three clusters, four clusters, and so on, and pick the solution that you find most useful, most insightful to you. Once you define k, the algorithm will draw k random means, k sets of means for each one of the descriptor variables. The next step, the algorithm will assign each case to the nearest mean using a very simple Euclidean distance, uh, di map distances. And this is the reason why you should always standardize the data, because the Euclidean distances, they ignore the units of measurement that are used to measure each one of the variables. So if one variable is measured on the very large unit of measurement, while another one is measured on a small unit of measurement, one variable is going to dominate the other. So that's why you want to standardize the variables. So it started by assigning each case to the nearest mean using Euclidean distance. Then it will recalculate the means within each one of the groups, reassign the case to the nearest mean, recalculate, and cycle between these two steps until there is very little change in the means. And this algorithm is known to converge. Eventually, that is going to happen, and it happens very fast. So to show the intuition behind that, I'm going to use this very simple example. We have a bunch of countries described in terms of two variables, the GDP per capita in logs and the death rate per 1,000 people. And if you look at this chart here, Okay, and you stare long enough, you're going to find some kind of clusters. For example, those countries here seem to form a group that have middle income and high death rate per thousand people. Here we have another group, another group. So intuitively, you can see that countries can be put into clusters or groups. But we wanted to do this more objectively. And we're going to do this using the k-means algorithm. So in this example, I'm going to preset k to 3. In other words, I wanted to cluster these countries into three groups. So the first step in k-means, and the algorithm does this automatically, the only thing you need to do is to specify the number of clusters. So k equals to 3, the algorithm is going to randomly generate three sets of means. And here they are. So these three crosses here were randomly created. We have a green combination of GDP per capita and uh, death per thousand people, the red and the blue means. And again, these three means were randomly generated. That's the first step. Next, the algorithm assigns each country, each observation, each case to the nearest mean. For example, Saudi Arabia on the upper left obviously is going to be a member of the green cluster, while Ukraine is going to be obviously a member of the blue cluster. Haiti, Zambia, Kenya are going to be members of the red cluster. And here they are. So I colored each one of the countries by proximity to the means. So each country 
was assigned to the nearest mean. The next step is to recalculate the means. So if okay, the countries highlighted in green are members of the green cluster, that green cross there is too far to the left to be the mean of the green cluster. So the algorithm recalculates the mean. So you went it from here to there. So once the means are recalculated, the next step is to repeat. Reassign each country to the nearest mean. For example, Portugal and Poland before were members of the blue cluster. Now that we were assigned to the nearest mean, they became members of the red cluster. Recalculate the mean. And you see now that the new mean is not that far from the previous one. In other words, the algorithm is converging. And you keep doing this until the means don't shift that much. And this is the final solution. That's pretty much how the k-means algorithm operates. Now I'm going to show you how you can run the k-means algorithm on my analytic tools for Excel. If you go to my example sheet, you're going to find this tab k-means with some sample data. In this data, I have 60 five countries, each country described by 36 socioeconomic variables. And we wanted to form clusters of countries according to their socioeconomic profile. We go to add-ins, Kamakura Analytic Tools, k-means, and this will run the k-means algorithm. And as you can see here, you can have as many as 100,000 rows or cases and as many as 100 variables or columns. The default for most of my add-ins is the range already open on your Excel. So in this case here, my range goes from A1 to AK66. This is the data I have for the k-means example. We are reading 65 rows and 36 columns. And here are the variables that we have available to cluster the country. Let's take a few ones. Arable land per person, food production index, electricity power consumption in kilowatt hours per person, military expenditures as a percentage of GDP, household consumption, now some variables about quality of life, life expectancy at birth, health expenditure per capita. Yeah, that should be it. Click OK. And let's form three clusters. And we always want to standardize the data as I explained before. Otherwise, we are going to be comparing apples and oranges. And there it is. We already have the cluster solution, and is asking if we wanted to save the cluster membership to show which cluster is the most likely assignment for each one of the countries. Let's say yes. And here we have the list of countries and which cluster they belong to. And on this sheet, we have the profile of each cluster. So cluster one is a cluster of large agricultural land per person but they tend to be poorer. Cluster two has a high food production index, high percentage of GDP spent on military, and so on and so forth. My add-in automatically highlights in red variables that are higher than average for that cluster, and in blue variables that are lower than average for that cluster. Since we standardize the data, the deviations from total average are the same as the averages shown here on the left side. And that's pretty much what the add-in does.